We don't have any randomised um, data comparing bispecific antibodies to CAR-T. I'd love to see one. There, there probably will be one eventually. The, the key issue at the moment is that CAR-T, uh, CD19 CAR-T cell uh, therapy, uh, they are commercially approved in, in most jurisdictions, well, in many jurisdictions around the world. And they are available and some would argue standard of care at patients at third line and um, in, in patients with early treatment failure even at second line. The CD20, CD3 bispecific antibodies, and there are several un under development, but the most advanced would be most Mosinituzumab with activity in follicular lymphoma and now approved in the EMA, uh, by the EMA. Um, Glofitimab, which is a highly active and aggressive B-cell lymphomas, DLBCL, and is probably close to regulatory approval, and epcaritimab, which has activity in both indolent and aggressive um, lymphomas. Now, the, the, the key difference between um, bispecific antibodies engaging CD3 and CAR T-cell therapy, yes, they're both engaging T-cells, they both have a T-cell mechanism of action. And so because of that, there are similarities in terms of their toxicity profile, cytokine release syndrome, ICANs, that they're similar. In terms of the logistics and the setup and the infrastructure that you need to deliver, that's where they differ widely. Biospecific antibodies are quote unquote off the shelf therapies. They are not manufactured, they are not um, patient specific. Um, so therefore a patient can commence therapy theoretically on a biospecific antibody as soon as uh, you have them in the clinic, um, you, can, you can start giving them biospecific antibody um, therapy. It's an off the shelf treatment. There's no apheresis, there's no manufacturing time. The drug's there when you want to give it. The caveat to that is that almost without fail, bispecific antibodies require what's called step-up dosing or priming dosing. And what I mean by that is that there are um, tiny doses given in the first week and then a, a slightly higher dose given in the, in the second week. And then only on the third week do you get to a dose which is biologically active in the sense that it's likely to result in anti-tumor efficacy. And I've, I've, I've said before that, that, that those first three weeks waiting for the patient to get to that sort of effective dose can often be the longest three weeks of a patient's life when they've got really rapidly progressing uh, relapsed lymphoma. Um, those three weeks can feel like a very long time, but um, it's still shorter than most CAR-T manufacturing periods. Um, Depending on the car, uh, sorry, depending on the biospecific construct, some biospecifics are given as limited duration. For instance, glofitimab and mosenetuzumab, and some are given um, continuously until until disease progression or unacceptable toxicity, like epcaritimab. Now, importantly, these are features of the study design, not of the antibodies themselves. So there's no reason why any given antibody can't be given in a time limited fashion, but um, that there is that requirement for continued dosing um, and, a, uh, and, a, and a longer number of treatments and a longer number of visits to the hospital for patients who were treated with biospecific antibodies um, at varying dose intervals, uh, whereas uh, chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapy is a one and done treatment. The patient has, um, uh, they undergo um, uh, lympho, uh, uh, lymphocyte collection, they have um, manufacture take place, they have their um, lymphodeplenic chemotherapy, the CAR T cells are reinfused, and then they have their response assessment and that's it. So it's a single therapy. Um, so from a patient perspective, um, there are differences. Um, I think from a, from a clinician perspective, um, there are, the, the uptake of CAR-T generally, um, I think globally, has been less than what was initially predicted um, compared with what um, you, know, you might anticipate based on the number of patients who are theoretically eligible for CAR-T. And there are many, many factors which are, that, which are um, feeding into that, but not least of which is that the number of um, CAR-T infusion centers is relatively small, whereas the number of um, centers which have clinicians treating lymphoma by, is probably you know six or ten to one for each infusion center um, the number of uh, smaller institutions that you have um, uh, where patients are being treated and so oftentimes patients 
in, if, you, if you live in a large city, you may have to travel a long way to get to a car T centre. Um, you may, I come from Australia, it's a very big country. There are certain states in Australia that still are not delivering commercial car T. And so you'd actually have to fly, relocate to a different city, jump on a plane for one or two, three hours in order to get this treatment, be away from your family. And if it comes to a point where we have bi-specific antibodies approved and you have, and, and you, some of these agents have uh, overall response rates of, um, you know, 60, 70 percent um, with CR rates of around 30 percent. And um, we're seeing a data being presented at this meeting um, suggesting that durable CRs, uh, so patients who achieve CR after getting glofitimab appear to have um, significant durability and, and few of those patients experience subsequent treatment failure. When you take into account that the uh, most of the CAR T-cell studies were not truly intention to treat and patients who were referred but never um, survived, you know, were not able to um, uh, get through the bridging period, they were not counted in the denominator when working out what the overall response rate was. A lot of the times, the, those studies were reported among the patients who actually were infused, forgetting about the fact that many patients have got such uh, rapidly progressive disease, they never even get considered for CAR-T because the referring, the, the referring clinician knows that that patient will not survive to receive a CAR-T cell infusion. So I think if, if someone ever does do a randomized phase three study comparing biospecific antibodies to CAR-T, I'm not sure what which the winner would be, um, and I think that bispecific antibodies will, when they're approved, will have dramatic um, uptake uh, as soon as they're available for the reasons that I've described.